Hey folks, this is the Smartech Black Smart Portable Hot Water Unit. I am going to show you how to set it up today. Let's get started. Hit it. G'day folks, Ben from Snowy's here today. Just down alongside a little creek that runs along the back of the Brown Hill Creek Caravan Park, which is a quaint little caravan park in Adelaide's eastern suburbs. It's a great place for locals to get away for a weekend or a good stopover for those who are traveling through. I've given us some space to show you some products and today we're here all about the Smart Tech products and I've got the Smart Tech Black Smart Hot Water Unit here. I'm gonna show you how to set it up today. So I'll start with what comes in the box when you buy the unit. Now this is the hot water unit itself. You get with it what you need for your shower rose and shower hose, some batteries for the ignition, your gas hose, this is the 12 volt cable and switch that you need to run the pump. You get two two meter hoses with the pump and the hose clamps you need. We've already assembled these today and an attachment on the end here so that you can draw water from the water source and pump it into the unit. These are a couple of attachments, one for gas and one for water. They're quite standard attachments, easy to get replacements if you lose or break anything and you get your instruction manual. Now we'll get started with setup. So starting with the unit here, we'll just have a look at the underneath um, where all the attachments happen. Now this um, compartment here is actually where the batteries go. Now these are all labeled cold water inlet, hot water outlet, gas inlet. We've got the on off switch here that turns the unit on off uh, all together. And this here is not something we need to worry about. It's a pressure release valve, but just leave that one alone. It'll do the job should the water pressure exceed a certain level inside the unit. Now, the unit weighs about five kilos, measures 44 centimeters in height, 30 centimeters across, and about 15 centimeters in depth. So we need something reasonably sturdy to hang it on, preferably non-combustible. I've got the uh, Smartec tripod stand behind me here, which works with these brackets that sit on the back here. There's also this carry handle here that we could just loop it over if we like, so we can hook it to the back of a vehicle, a spare wheel or on the side of a roof rack or wherever you like. But this tripod certainly makes mounting it very easy. So I'll start by putting this up on the tripod. Now this tripod is an optional accessory. It's lightweight and easy to use. It is probably one of the better accessories you can get with your Smart Tech hot water unit. Now that's mounted on there sturdily at the moment. What I'll do next is attach the gas. Now we'll grab our gas hose and this little brass adapter that came with it. Now there's a POL fitting on one end with a regulator that goes to our gas bottle and a 3 8 BSP fitting on the other. Now this won't screw directly to the unit here. We need to use this adapter. Now this screws on here. We need to make sure the little rubber valve is in the bottom there. We screw this on as tight as we can. If you're struggling with your fingers, use a spanner to make sure it's done up nice and firm. They do say that these are all designed to be hand tightened, but it can be a good idea to use a spanner to tighten it up anyway. And then we screw this on underneath there, and the other end goes into our gas bottle. Now it's a good idea to make sure your gas bottle sits away from the unit a little bit. Given there's burners in here, we don't really want the gas sitting underneath this unit. So just put it as far away from the unit as practically possible. One thing I haven't mentioned is make sure with your gas fittings that you use soapy water or something to make sure you haven't got any gas leaks before, the turn, before you turn the unit on. Now we grab what we need for the shower rose to be set up. We've got our two meter hose here. There's two different ends on it. This shorter end attaches to the actual shower units. This longer collar here attaches to the shower rose. So we screw that in place. And then the other ends, we're going to attach to the hot water outlets of the unit up under here, which is the red labeled one in the middle. We screw that in place as well. So now we've got our gas attached and our shower hose or shower rose attached. We'll put the batteries in place. So we flick this sort of lever under here and that then opens up this top compartment. Now we need to make sure the batteries are inserted the right way. There is a positive and a negative inside the lid here. So we need to make sure the batteries go in the right way. Now don't force these in too far. Push them up far enough for this little black lip here to hold the battery. Don't force it any further than that because you can bend the contacts further up inside the unit. So we just push this one in place as well. So we've got positive and negative. And then we use the lids to push the batteries in as far as they need to go. Twist this little lever here and they're locked into place. All we need to attach now is a water source so water can go into the unit. So coming over to our pump here, we need to attach both water and power to this. Now the pump, as I mentioned, comes with two hoses. They're not attached when you buy it, but you do get these close hand, uh, hose clamps. So you can attach them. These are two meters each. And you also need to attach this unit on the outlet side of the pump. 
Now the outlet side is indicated by this water flow direction that's on the sticker here and also a little arrow that's actually stamped into the unit here. So the water's gonna come in this side and out that side there. Now I'm gonna use one other accessory today. This is an optional accessory, which is a filter. Now this goes in place of this little unit here that came with your unit, I'm gonna use this instead. This filters the water going into the pump or into the actual hot water unit, and this is attaches up underneath. The pump itself is okay with unfiltered water. If the, unit, if, the, um, if the particles can get through here, the pump can handle it. We also need to attach power, so this one attaches onto here. This is an SAE attachment on here. There is a switch in this cord here, and they go to alligator plugs. Now I've got a cigarette plug in my power adapter today, so I do need to improvise to make a temporary measure to be able to turn this into a cigarette plug with this little adapter here, but you may want to permanently wire that. So let's get started. So I'm just going to attach my uh, inlet um, adapter or inlet fittings to the bottom of the unit here. I need to make sure it goes to this last fitting here, which is the cold water inlet. Now I'm not going to use this one today that came with the unit. As I mentioned, I'm going to use the optional accessory. Now this just screws into place here, just firmly, don't over tighten it. There is a rubber grommet in there. And this now gives us a place to attach our inlet hose here from the pump. Now I've got everything set up here now. I've got my two litre inlet hose coming to the pump. The pump's powered by my 12 volt power supply here. Now I have had to improvise with the alligator clips and some electrical tape to make sure this doesn't arc out here so that I can actually use a cigarette plug in my power supply. Now I've got the, the inlet hose for the water attached to my unit here. Now I just want to mention that the pump is designed to push water, not pull water. So the pump needs to be set up next to the water source, not next to the shower. This pump's designed to be able to push up to about 10 meters of length and about three meters in rise. So this hose could potentially be up to 10 meters long, but this unit would need to be 10 meters away from the pump. So the pump pushes the water, it doesn't pull it. This hose then comes up underneath the unit there, attaches to our filter here, which was the optional accessory that we talked about. We've got the gas attached here, that's switched on at the bottle. There's a switch under here that I need to flick on to get the unit started. Then we can come back to our switch over in the wire of our pump here. As soon as we switch this on, the pump's gonna turn on and charge the unit with water and it'll switch off once it reaches a certain pressure. Now we're all but ready to go here now. I just wanna talk about the units, uh, the, the controls on the front of the unit here. Now on the left hand side here, we've got our gas setting. So maximum is the warmest setting, minimum is the coolest setting. Water on the other side here, this is adjusting our flow rate. Now, worth noting here that minimum is two liters per, li per minute. Maximum is six liters per minute. The pump we've got attached to this at the moment is only capable of four liters per minute or 4.3 liters per minute. So if we turn this around, it's gonna to get to about here and it's gonna cut out. It's gonna stop heating because the pump can't pump faster than that. It's not broken, it just isn't capable of it. If you've got a bigger pump, you'd be able to wind this right around, get more water flow, and you still get hot water out of the shower rows. Now this winter and summer setting here is basically adjusting how many injectors are heating the water that's going into the unit. On winter setting, there's about six injectors heating the water. It's using about three times the gas than the summer setting, which is only using about two injectors to heat the water, and you get much more use out of the gas from your unit. So if you're starting off with warmer water, leave it on the summer setting and save your gas. For today, I'm gonna to have it on the winter setting though. I'm gonna to touch on a few safety features in the unit. Now, if the water shuts out for whatever reason, the whole unit shuts down. Also, if the gas flame, the pilot flame inside blows out, it automatically shuts the gas supply off to the unit. And it also has anti-freeze protection in by when the temperature reaches something like zero degrees. Um, something cuts in and ejects the water out of all the hoses in the unit so they don't freeze and break anything. The last thing we need to do is grab the shower rose. We turn the unit on or the water starts flowing and heating by flicking the shower rose around on the side here or the switch on the shower rose and we're good to go. And that is how you set up the SmartTech Black Smart Hot Water System. These are a great unit for hot showers no matter where you set up camp. And you can grab them online at snowies.com.au. If you've got any questions, let us know down in the comments below. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. If you like that video, subscribe to our channel. You'll get all of our latest information or head here for some other SmartTech videos.